The divisional round of the NFL playoffs has arrived. In my opinion, the best weekend of the year for an NFL fan because it's the last weekend where we see as many as four games and obviously everything on the line in these four games should be some great football. But I'll tell you what, the odds makers don't expect the individual games to be all that great. The smallest line we see is in the Dallas Green Bay game where the Packers are a six point favorite. Substantial spreads in all four of these games in my opinion, though, the favorites are favorites for a reason. I will admit that on first glance, I lean towards all four favorites this week. But you know that's not going to happen. You know all four favorites are not going to cover. So you look at it closer and closer, trying to talk yourself into one dog or another. In my opinion, you could talk yourself into either one of the dogs in the AFC games. I'm talking about the Baltimore Ravens going on the road to face the New England Patriots, where the Patriots are a seven-point favorite, and the Indianapolis Colts going on the road to face Denver, the Broncos, a seven-point favorite in that one. First, let's touch on Baltimore and New England. We know these teams met two years ago in the playoffs. The spread almost identical, New England minus eight. Ravens came away with a 28-13 win, went on to win the Super Bowl. Certainly, Baltimore could win this game outright. They're excellent on both sides of the ball, but especially on defense. Eighth in total defense and sixth in points allowed. Tell you what, though, the weakness of that Baltimore defense is the secondary. They are 23rd against the pass. Tom Brady has been great this season. This New England offense, fourth in the NFL in points scored. They average 29.2 points per game. And their defense has played very well also. The Patriots, eighth in points allowed. They're surrendering fewer than 20 points per game. And a minute ago, I sort of said offhanded that the Ravens were good on both sides of the ball, and statistically they are. Top 10 in the league in points scored and points allowed. But their offense in December was not good at all. They produced 20 points or fewer in three consecutive games until last week when they hung 30 points on the Steelers in an upset win. However, even in that game, their secondary, which as we said is the weakness of their defense, their secondary showed their warts. Ben Roethlisberger throwing for 334 yards, First, or the last time they met Roethlisberger, not the first time, because that was way back in week two, but the last time they met Roethlisberger, he threw for 340 yards and six touchdowns, so I guess they did a little bit better this time, but still, they surrendered 334 passing yards. Now they're going up against Tom Brady and this New England offense. Don't particularly like their chances. That being said, it is going to be a sub-freezing day in New England, so... Will the passing game be affected by that? Now, I know, I know. We've seen Tom Brady so many times in the freezing cold. Seems like he never loses when the temperature drops below freezing. Tell you what, though, Joe Flacco has had some pretty good success in the cold, too. So this is one of those games. Yes, I still do lean towards New England, but there is a definite and obvious case to be made for the underdog here. As a matter of fact, the public slightly favoring Baltimore at sportsbooks throughout Las Vegas early this week. So, again, the Patriots a seven-point favorite. But this is a game where the underdog, I believe, has a fighting chance to win. Same can be said for the other AFC game, where the Colts go on the road to face the Broncos. Denver a seven-point favorite here. These teams met back in week one in Denver, and the, the Broncos won by exactly seven points. But that game sort of illustrates why I think the Colts might be a sensible bet here. You know, the Broncos got out to a big lead in that game, but Andrew Locke just kept throwing and throwing and throwing, and eventually... The Colts snuck in there. Again, they only lost by seven. They actually had the ball at the end of the game with a chance to drive down there and tie it up. They lead the NFL in pass yards per game, do the Colts. And I know the Broncos have been very good on defense this season, but they've been better against the run than they have in the secondary. And they're a big seven-point favorite here. Just not sure I feel real comfortable giving Andrew Luck and this Indianapolis offense seven points. We know how good the Colts are on that side of the ball. Like I said, we know Andrew Luck is just going to chuck it, chuck it, and chuck it some more, especially if the Colts fall behind. So if you're going to bet on Denver here, even if they have a 20-point second-half lead, not sure you can feel entirely comfortable with things. And you look at this Denver offense. Yes, they finished top five in the NFL in total offense once again, but they really regressed over the course of the season. They were not playing their best football at the end of the year until their Week 17 game against the Oakland Raiders when they hung 40 points on the Raiders, but that is the Raiders. Denver had scored fewer than 30 points in four consecutive games heading into that game, and we know anybody who's watched this Denver offense over the past six or eight weeks, something is just not quite right there. Now, the Colts are only average defensively, but they are a little bit better in the secondary than they are against the run. 
I know Denver has recommitted to the running game over the second half of this season. I do expect them to run the game, to run the ball a good deal on Sunday. But I tell you what, Denver, a pass first offense. If they're going to try to go with a run first type game plan against Andrew Luck and the Colts, not sure I like that. You know, you got to go with what your strength is. And even though they haven't played as well towards the end of the season, the strength of this Denver offense is still Peyton Manning and the passing attack. I know the Colts a little bit better in the secondary than they are up front, but you know, they're 11th against the pass. It's not like they're dominant in the secondary. So the Broncos should be able to make some things happen there. As we said, they hung 31 points on this Indianapolis defense the last time these teams met. Denver's a favorite for a reason. I'd be surprised if they lost. But out of all these four games, as of now, again, it's early in the week. It's here on Wednesday. But here on Wednesday, out of all these four games, I think I like the underdog Colts more than I like any of the other dogs. The Ravens right there behind them. As I said, I think a legitimate case could be made for the dogs in both of the AFC games. You talk about the NFC games, though, going to be really tough for me to get behind either one of the underdogs. Let's talk about the Panthers-Seahawks game first. Listen, I know this line is huge. Seattle, a 10.5 point home favorite, and Carolina has won five straight games. But the Seahawks have won six straight games, nine of their last 10. They are just so good at home, and they are so good on defense. Once again this season, the Seahawks finished first in the NFL in both total defense, meaning yards allowed and points allowed. They're surrendering fewer than 16 points per game. And to me, that's what it comes down to here. The Carolina offense is just not particularly good, certainly not explosive. Middle of the pack, bottom half of the league in terms of points scored. Just don't think they're going to have much success at all against this Seattle defense. And I have history to back me up on that. These teams have met for three consecutive years, including earlier this season. Seattle has won all three of those games, but all three of those wins have come by five points or fewer. So you might look at this number here, a 10 and a half point number, and you say, wait a second, these teams play every year and the Seahawks always just squeak one out, including earlier this season when Seattle won 13-9. to All those three games, though, including this year's game, were in Carolina. Now the Panthers travel to Seattle, and the Seahawks playing their best football right now. I know Carolina's good on defense. They've been playing especially well on defense here over the past month. They now rank 10th in total defense. But the weakness of that defense is... The front seven, they're not that good against the run. 16th against the run. Seattle first in the NFL in rush yards per game. Marshawn Lynch going to run the ball right at this Carolina defense. Think he's going to have a lot of success doing so. I don't expect the Carolina offense to exceed 10 points here. So if you're going to be a Panthers better, I think what you're relying on is that their defense is going to limit this Seattle offense. And indeed they could. We keep talking about the last three times these teams have met. They've played in each of the last three years. And Seattle has scored 16 points or fewer in each one of those games. So I'm sure the Carolina defense feels very good about their ability to slow down this Seattle offense. But again, those games were all in Carolina. Seattle, over the past three years, has averaged nearly nine more points per game at home than on the road. We know how good the Seahawks team is at home. Again, they lead the NFL in rush yards per game. 26th in pass yards per game, but that's just because they don't ask Russell Wilson to do a whole lot. You know, a lot of NFL teams that rank near the bottom of the league in passing stats is because they don't have a real good quarterback, don't have a real good passing attack. In Seattle, that's not really the case. For them, it's intentional. They want to run the football. They want to be a power running offense. Russell Wilson has shown throughout his career that he can take really as much as they put on his plate. So I don't think there's any problems with the Seattle passing attack. If they're forced to take to the air, I think they're going to be able to do so. I just don't think they're going to have to. I think they're going to run the ball effectively. I think their defense is going to dominate this Carolina offense. And as of now, I lean towards Seattle, even though it's a big 10.5 point number. I also lean towards the favorite in the other NFC game. The Dallas Cowboys go on the road to face the Green Bay Packers. Green Bay, a six point favorite. Been a lot of Dallas love over the last few days. A lot of people think this line is a little bit too big. And hey, the Cowboys were great on the road this season, perfect on the road. They're much better on the road than they were at home. But the Green Bay Packers, there just hasn't been a team that's played better at home than the Packers this year. I'm not sure. You'd have to look back over the last two or three years. I know the Seahawks are a great home team. The New Orleans Saints have been a great home team over the past few years. But I'm not sure there's been a team with a, that has had eight games that have been more dominant, eight home games that have been more dominant than the Green Bay Packers 
eight no at home this year. They averaged over 40 points per game. So in my opinion, that's what makes it nearly impossible to back the Dallas Cowboys here. You have this Green Bay offense first in the NFL in points scored. They averaged over 40 points at 40 points per game at home this season. And they're facing a Cowboys defense that is very ordinary. Dallas 19th in total defense and 26th against the pass. So here we have an opportunity. I, I think it's nothing but an opportunity. Here we have an opportunity to back Aaron Rodgers and this Green Bay offense at Lambeau Field against the NFL's 26th ranked secondary. Say no more, in my opinion, I will be backing the Green Bay Packers in this game. That being said, we were reminded in Green Bay's last regular season game against the Detroit Lions just how tenuous this all is. You know, when we bet NFL football, really sports betting in general, you can feel so good about one side and you can say, hey, this is such a lock and you can outsmart everybody and you can be watching the game or the contest and everything's going just as you thought it would go. And you say, you see, it was a free money giveaway and then something could happen that could just change everything. And we saw when Green Bay hosted the Detroit Lions in week 17, I was on the Packers. They were seven and a half point favorite. I know a lot of other people were on the Packers. They had a seven point lead. They were driving the ball right down the field about to score again. And then what happened? Aaron Rodgers went down with a calf strain. He's been battling a calf injury for the past couple of weeks. He had to leave the game. At that time, it looked like he wasn't going to be able to return. And all of a sudden, even though Green Bay did score a touchdown to go up by 14, all of a sudden that bet didn't feel so good at all. Detroit then went down and scored to make it 14-7. And at that time, if I could have gotten out of the bet, I totally would have. Now we know what ended up happening. Aaron Rodgers ended up coming back in the game. The Packers ended up winning and covering, so all ended well. But we were reminded there, Aaron Rodgers, you know, this guy is battling a calf injury. And the Packers are the type of team, you know, some teams are balanced enough where they can sustain the loss of their quarterback. The Carolina Panthers, for example, Cam Newton is not that much better than Derek Anderson. We've seen that when Anderson's been in the lineup this season. So if Newton were to go down or if he weren't able to play in this weekend's game, I'm not sure how much that would change things in terms of the way you view the Carolina offense. If Aaron Rodgers were to go down, that would change everything in terms of this Green Bay offense. Dallas would be favored in the game if Rodgers weren't playing, and with good reason. So even though I do like Green Bay, I think they're going to cover the six-point number. We know anything can happen, and if Aaron Rodgers' calf injury acts up, anything really could happen. But we can't plan on those type of things. I expect Aaron Rodgers to be healthy and play this entire game. I expect the Packers to win and cover the six-point number. There you have it. There you have it. Those are a few thoughts on all four of these games. Do want to remind you we preview all these games in great detail here at Bet Deck Tips. So please do check back with us over the next couple of days. Until then, for Bet Deck NFL, I'm John Arnett.